every horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. If half the kids in your crowd like chocolate cake and the rest like yellow cake, here's how to keep them all happy. Next time you have them over for refreshments, have Mom bake up a Betty Crocker marble cake. Boy, that's about the most happy eating kind of cake there is. Rich, chocolatey swirls in a big, sunny yellow cake. Everyone loves Betty Crocker marble cake, and it's so easy for Mom to bake with Betty Crocker's marble cake mix. All she has to add is water and two fresh eggs for a perfect cake every time. Cake after cake after cake. It's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. And you know what that means. It means you get a gee-but-my-mom's-wonderful kind of cake every time. Mmm, mmm. Ask Mom to get Betty Crocker marble cake mix next time she goes to the store, will you? Oh, and tell her that Betty Crocker marble cake is one of the most fun to bake, too. With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Tucson Thorpe had gained the reputation of being a reckless, ruthless gunman, in spite of his smooth and almost gentle approach. With four followers, he had moved from Arizona Territory into the state of Texas, leaving many victims in his wake whose stories added to his notoriety. Yeah, there I was sitting in my office at the bank here in El Paso, checking over the day's accounts. Well, sir, someone tapped at the office door in a meek sort of way. Come in, come in. <clears throat> well, sir, what can I do for you? Pardon me, but are you the bank cashier, sir? That's right, Gilbert's the name. Oh, yes. Well, Mr. Gilbert, my name is Thorpe. I hate to bother you, but I'm rather pushed for money right now, so I decided to come to you. You have collateral, I suppose? Of course. I'll give you my note. Well, but that's not collateral, Mr. Thorpe. Oh, look here, sir. A note already made out and signed. A note for $10,000. <laughs> Evidently, Mr. Thorpe, you're not familiar with banks. If you have some tangible assets... I have. This. A gun. What kind of a joke is this? I'm sorry, but it isn't a joke. There's the note. Please get the cash. Now. Two weeks later, another victim told of Tucson's ingenious method of operation to an interested crowd in the Stockton Cafe. Uh, the day of the robbery, I left the bank with over 5000 in cash to make a cattle deal. I was riding back to my ranch when I heard hoofbeats coming along the trail behind me. Calling to me, what's up? Well, well, let's ride along while I talk to you. Do you mind, Mr. Jackson? Well, all right with me, but who are you? Oh, pardon me. My name is Thorpe. Shall we ride on, sir? Well, sure. Get up there. Yeah, oh, come on there. Yeah. What do you want to talk about? Well, I understand you're preparing to make a deal. I could use $5,000, Mr. Jackson, and I thought perhaps what I had to offer you would be of greater interest and of much more value to you than the other deal. Say, who told you I was going to make a deal? <laughs> After all, sir, anyone standing near you in the bank would have heard what you were saying when you drew out that cash. Yeah, uh, reckon so. Now, not that I'm the least bit interested in dealing with you, Thorpe, 
But I am curious. What's your proposition? Oh, simple, Mr. Jackson. I offer you your life. But my life? Well, of all the... Say, what is this? Just as I say, your life for 5000 Otherwise, I'll be forced to use this gun. Oh, hold it, hold it. Mister, I think you're loco. Drop that gun. What? Drop your gun, Mr. Jackson. My friends are just behind us. Uh, a gang? Wait. That name, Thorpe. Tucson Thorpe, sir. The outlaw leader. <laughs> you flatter me. I'm not much of a leader. Drop the gun. Uh, all right, all right. Now your wallet. Oh, I know how you feel. I was robbed once. Made me feel foolish and resentful. Hand it over. Well, uh, here. Good day, Mr. Jackson. I suggest you continue onto your range and don't turn back toward town. Get up there. Get up. And that was my experience with the hombre known as Tucson Thorpe. By thunder, I'd have taken him for a meek little bank clerk or someone like that. It sure beats me. Yes. And so Strange Story was added to Strange Story as Tucson and his men moved farther into Texas. One afternoon, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode through the hills near San Antonio. The gang operating down this way, Tonto, must be the one led by Tucson Thorpe. Ah. Reports say leader gang not act tough. Fool people. That's Thorpe, all right. He's smooth, clever, and quick with a gun, from all reports. That gang has stayed longer in the San Antonio Territory than they've stayed anywhere else. Maybe them have hideouts around here. Yes, that's possible. We'll camp near San Antonio a few days and search for Thorpe and his men. Come on, sir. Let's go. In a hideout cabin not far from town, Tucson was talking to his four companions. You all seem to think we should be leaving here, and you wonder why I've insisted that we delay our departure. Remember when I rode over to New Braunfels, the town between here and Austin last week, then rode back to San Antonio on the stage wearing a cutaway coat, steel-rimmed glasses, and a false mustache? Yeah, we knew you were working on something. I went to the San Antonio bank, posing as a well-to-do businessman. I told the banker I was from Austin, might transfer a large amount to his bank. I asked about the bank assets and if there might be any good investments. I thought you were just getting a line on the bank. I was at the time. But I found out the state of Texas is buying Mexican bonds to the amount of $100,000. The bank had told me a few thousand dollars worth were available if I wanted to invest. He said a Mexican bank representative is in Austin and will take the cash back this week by stage. (laughs) Of course, it's all supposed to be kept secret. (laughs) You have a way of getting folks to talk too much. Yeah, but what's that all got to do with staying here, Tucson? Just this. Wearing that same disguise, I'll take the same stage on which the Mexican is traveling. It comes through here day after tomorrow. You men will be waiting at Pointed Rock. I'll get the drop on that Mexican when you hold up the stage. You men take care of the special guard and driver. Man alive. Are you sure there'll be that much cash? Yes. No one is supposed to know about it. The Mexican will have it with him. The stage strong box will carry the regular consignment. We'll get that money and then we'll leave here for good. night, under cover of darkness, the Lone Ranger and Tonto visited the sheriff at his home in town. Wait here, Tonto. I'll go talk to the sheriff. Oh, me wait. Well? Good evening, hey. Sheriff. My staff hoot. Reach, mister. Be quick about it. I'm not an outlaw, Sheriff. You don't need that gun. That man says you are... You don't read I it. came from the marshal in Austin. You sent a telegram to him about having help to capture the Thorpe gang. Uh, hold on. You mean to say the marshal would send a mass... I and... brought a note from him that will identify me. Read it, please. Step inside. But remember, you're still covered. Yeah, let me see that note. Here it is. Yes. Well, by thunder, this is from the marshal. 
She's the masked man who brings it. He's a lone ranger. Great Scott, so that's who you are. That's right. Well, by Jiminy, mister, I heard you wore a mask, but I didn't think you'd call on me. I'm, a, I'm sorry to jump you like I did, but seeing that mask and all... I understand. I'm mighty glad to meet you. Well, sit down, and I'll tell you what I can about the game. Thanks, sir. Well, see, Tucson Thorpe is smooth and clever. He and his men pulled several robberies and then covered their tracks so well we couldn't trail them. I see. I'm sure glad you were here, mister, because there's something big in the wind. Oh? And let me tell you, if Thorpe and his men find out about it, the result may cause an international situation that'll be the talk of the country. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Cowboy Tom is a boy of six. He knows all kinds of cowboy tricks. He can rope a steer because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 You bet. Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. And besides giving you go power, Cheerios is downright wonderful tasting. That toasted oat flavor is really something. And when you add milk and your favorite fruit, say some sliced bananas, you're in for a delicious breakfast treat. Get the whole family off to a good start every morning with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. to continue. The sheriff's statement interested the Lone Ranger greatly. He asked, Sheriff, do you think the gang is still in this territory? I don't rightly know. But let me tell you, I'm plenty worried about the fact that they might be. If they are, it may give us a chance to capture them. Maybe. But what's bothering me is I had a secret communication saying a certain Mexican official is traveling through here by stage to the border day after tomorrow. Oh? He'll be carrying $100,000 for the Mexican government. If Thorpe got wind of that... I I see what you mean. The official's taking a big risk. Yep. But he figures if the stage is held up, the crooks will take the strong box as usual. The cash he's carrying will be in his luggage. He figures nobody knows about it. But Thorpe is mighty smart at finding out things. Hmm. Sheriff, I suggest you wire that Mexican representative that you'll meet him in New Braunfels. Yeah? I'll ride there with you. Yeah. I think I have a plan that will get him and the case through safely and may result in the capture of the Tucson Thorpe gang. Before dawn the next morning, the sheriff with the Lone Ranger set out for the town of New Braunfels, through which the stage would pass before reaching San Antonio. Toto, after being given certain instructions, stayed behind. I'm curious to know what that plan of yours is, mister. My idea is this, Sheriff. We'll convince that Mexican official he should stop over at New Braunfels and wait for the next southbound stage. But if Thorpe and his gang hold up that stage tomorrow, and the Mexican's not on it, they'll hold up the next stage looking for him. Now listen, I'll disguise myself as a Mexican and take the official's place on the southbound stage at New Braunfels. When it leaves for San Antonio. Then if Thorpe's gang plan a hold up, I'll be ready for them. But you can't handle them alone. No, I don't expect to, Sheriff. You take my horse on to San Antonio and wait there with Toto and a posse until the stage for the border arrives. Yes. Yeah. When it heads south from San Antonio, follow it. If anything happens, move in and we'll grab the gang. Yeah, that's a good idea. I hope Thorpe and his men do plan to stop that stage. <laughs> He'll sure get the surprise of his life. Oh, Later, when the...
disguised Lone Ranger and the sheriff arrived in New Braunfels, they met the stage and talked to the Mexican official, who agreed to their plans. Then the Lone Ranger boarded the southbound stage in his place. south from New Braunfels drew to a stop at the hotel in San Antonio. <laughs> Tucson Thorpe, also in disguise and waiting with the crowd, saw a tall, genteel-looking Mexican in the coach. The driver left the seat of the stage and walked to the coach. Well, senor, we got a five-minute wait here if you want to get out and stretch. Yes, senor, but I shall wait in the coach. Hmm. Any passengers heading for Lorena? I'm going to Laredo, driver. Have my carpet bag put aboard, please. Well, sure. Give me the bag. I'll put it on board myself. Just climb in, mister. There's another passenger in the stage. All right. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Where's this, senor? You're Mexican, of course. Do you speak English? Si, senor. See, si, I, I did not expect to have company on this trip. I hope you're not disappointed, sir. It's a long and uninteresting trip to the border, so frankly, I'm pleased to have company. I do not mind, senor. Good. All right. Oh, I think we're about to leave. Bueno, I do not like the waiting. The sheriff, who had followed the stage to the edge of town when it arrived, went through the back streets leading silver and joined Toto and the posse, who were waiting in a grove of trees a short distance from San Antonio. Who there? Who there? Who there? How do you mean? Oh. You go through with plan, Sheriff? Yes, Toto. Your friend is on the stage. It should be passing here any minute. Then we'll trail it. That's good. Maybe nothing will happen, but if it does, we'll be ready. Yes, sir. I think stage coming now. Yep, that's it. We'll keep out of sight till the passing. All right, Sheriff. There he goes. We'll follow. Keep out of sight. Let's go, men. Get him. Get him off his car. As the stagecoach traveled from San Antonio toward Pointed Rock, where the gang was in hiding... Tucson carried on a conversation in a mild, friendly tone. The Lone Ranger was somewhat concerned about having a passenger in the coach in case of trouble. And as Tucson talked, the Lone Ranger watched him closely. He noticed that the mild-mannered man periodically raised his hand to his mustache, not to smooth or twirl it as others might do, but to press it against his upper lip. Stage travel is interesting because one meets people, don't you think? That is so, senor. When one is in the banking business, he must make many friends. The Lone Ranger's glance scanned the man's hands, some brown, and the left hand calloused as if from holding reins. Then as Tucson again raised his hand to the mustache, the Lone Ranger's keen eyes noted the fact that the stranger was wearing a false mustache. Like a flash, the truth dawned on him. A smooth, gentle voice, the hands of a hard-riding horseman, the steel-rimmed glasses and a false mustache. Just the type of disguise such a man as Tucson Thorpe might use. It was at that moment when... Oh, oh, coming! Use your gun, George! Use the hold up, senor. That's right, my friend. Now I'll take hold it, you. Hold it, you. You're not Mexican. This is a trick. I'll show you. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold See how Tucson's making out, Sandy? Right. You men, keep that garden driver covered. We'll right. take care of him. Hey, what is this? Tucson's not down. Stop that gun. No. Oh. Uh, hey, look, a posse coming. Uh, Let's get out of here. Uh, Give leather men. They are those saddles. Right that Mexican. No, you won't. Delayed from mounting their horses by the Lone Ranger and driver, the Quicks turn to fight the oncoming posse. But greatly outnumbered and without Tucson or Sandy to help, they were quickly overpowered and disarmed. Who there? Who there? You 
you all right, Missy? Yes, Sheriff. You'll find Tucson Thorpe lying unconscious in the coach. Tucson Thorpe inside the coach? Yes. He also was in disguise, Sheriff, and boarded the stage as a passenger in San Antonio. You, you're not a Mexican, even though you look like one. I don't get it. Never mind, Ted. We'll see about Thorpe. Well, what happened? I, I, that Mexican official, he suddenly turned on me. Fortunately, I finally saw through your disguise, Thorpe. What? Your ingenious plan would have worked for the real Mexican official. <laughs> I admit Thorpe was mighty surprised when you did turn on him, mister. You all right, Kimasabi? Yes, Toto. Did you bring Silver? Uh Uh-huh. Him waiting behind stage with Scout. It's good we catch Tucson and gang. Now Mexican fella get through all right. Yes, Thorpe and his men are finished. We'll get him back to San Antonio and put him in jail. I'm sure mighty glad you came to help us, mister. That's all right, Sheriff. If you don't need our help any longer... Cotton and I'll start back to Austin. We'll take care of these coyotes. Don't worry about that. Time up, men. Right, let's go, Toto. Adios, everybody. Adios. 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 Come on. Adios. 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 Sheriff, I learned a Mexican official was to ride the stage today carrying a great amount of cash. The man who just left looked like a Mexican and talked like one. That is, until the holdup. Then he suddenly changed. <laughs> Took you by surprise, didn't he, Tucson? Didn't think you would meet an hombre who's more clever than you are, huh? Uh, I don't understand how he discovered I was disguised. That's where he was smarter than you again. He was in disguise, too. What? Let me tell you something, Tucson. Many a crook who thought he was smarter than all get out. He's had the wind taken out of his sails by that hombre. Get to the point, Sheriff. Who is he? An hombre who usually wears a black mask. He's the Lone Ranger. Copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.